Hi, welcome to Sequel Decay. Get yeah. ready for the top 10 list of things we want to say after having sex. You go first. <laughs> Number 10, the goofy scream. Stefan, would you like to do the goofy scream for us? Uh, <laughs> nice. Tim. I'm on the spot here. Yeah, I, 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 I never get I never get laid, so that's the problem. Why won't Brie Larson date me? Yeah, Number nine. That's <laughs> Number eight. Cookies are for closers. Stefan. Still thinking. God damn it. Number six. Tim. Oh. <laughs> I think that's George of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Just scream. Watch out for that tree when you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're getting a second date. <laughs> Number five. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? Nice. <laughs> Actually, any American Psycho quote will do. Yeah. Man, his business card is so perfect. <laughs> Why can't mine be like that? Thanks. That's bone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she prefers Paul Allen's penis to mine. <laughs> We're just going to go into like American Psycho quotes yeah. at this point. I got another one. In the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> I have to return some videotapes. <laughs> That's you not calling her back. <laughs> What's the Mickey Mouse? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Um. <laughs> Wahoo! Yeah. <laughs> when you're uh, I'm partial to the link scream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's gonna think you like your dick fell off or something. <laughs> or he. Um, this is an. Oh, uh, Willem Dafoe <laughs> scream as his balls get crushed with a block of wood in Antichrist. Okay. Um, please do. Um, I don't remember it very well. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like the audience can. The pick audience it can pick it up. I'm yeah. sure we have such a great audience of ten people, including Stefan's mom, who's clearly seen Antichrist. She'll love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> kind of got off track there. Great. That's fine. Um, it never doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of sex, let's talk about Night in the Woods. Hell yeah. Smooth. <laughs> Smooth. Um. Hello and welcome to One Offs, the side show of Sequel Decay, where we talk about anything that doesn't follow our fucking stupid gimmick. I'm Chris Ranton, with me is Stefan Salehio. Hello. And we have a special guest this week, uh, Timothy Ralph. Hi, it's me. I'm Tim. Nice to be here, you guys. Timothy. 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 It's, Timothy. it's me. Yeah. Timothy. <laughs> I'm never anything but Timothy. <laughs> you ever seen that uh, kids cartoon, Timothy Goes to School? Of course. That's all I think about every time I... Can I just tell a really, really quick story? Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just really quick. Um, so in the 10th grade, I was at a football game and um, it's sort of like a, a thing that I'm sure everybody did this, but like um, we would all like sneak in booze and get oh, yeah. plastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's normal. Yeah. That's what we do here, actually. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe not sneak in. I think you guys are, are both... You're, like, I'm not allowed to be here right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> Are we going to prison? No, we actually just... Chris Hansen oh, This is out? not my aunt and uncle's place. I don't know who's, whose house this is. Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> Sequel Decay, live in someone's house we broke into. <laughs> um, yeah, so... You just hear in the background... <laughs> oh, who's that? That's our other special guest. The people we abducted. That's just, that's just a gunshot. In five <laughs> <seconds>. <laughs> just like... Don't be a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Snitches uh, get stitches. <laughs> Remember, kids. <laughs> um, so I was at this football game, and my buddy and I, we like we had our shitty fucking high schooler drink. I think it might have been like Goldschlager or something like that. And we both mm. took like a massive shot in the bathroom outside of the stadium. And um, there was this man with a mustache who I just remember like getting real shook by. Like, white, long mustache just staring at us as he's washing his hands. And I'm like, that guy's going to fucking rat us. Like, I knew. He left before us. We're walking forward. And then the security guards come. And they start, like, hollering at us. And my friend, Curtis, uh, he, Curtis, if you, you're not going to be listening. Um, but just in case you are, I love you. Uh, <laughs> um, he, he starts, like, the guy comes at him and approaches him. And he starts just going, like, oh, no. Nope, like every time he tries to talk with him. <laughs> so, long story short, we get caught. And my friend that night, who I was talking to about it, made made a really shitty MS paint uh, image of, of Timothy from Timothy Goes to School with yep. like a, a pasted prison jumpsuit on him. <laughs> uh, he called it Timothy Goes to Jail. And um, yeah, that's, that's forever going to be burned in my head.
<laughs> so night in the woods. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, this week we're not talking about a movie. Thank God. Thank God. I fucking I fucking hate movies. Yeah. Like. Have you ever watched, like, Toy Story 4 and gone, God, if I could just commit suicide right now? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, but I understand. <laughs> if I could fuck a <laughs> body pillow right now, yeah. it would be objectively better than watching a movie. That's mm. strong words yeah. from a strong man. But correct ones. To be <laughs> yes. <laughs> In fact, I'm not drunk enough. Let's get me another beer, Stefan. And another <laughs> So yeah, how, is this one getting beefed out this time? Or? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely, mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> we have to. You want to stay on the air? Um, <laughs> yeah, just because the network won't allow it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your your big conglomerate that you guys answer. The big to conglomerate, is... the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, yeah. You got your YouTube Heroes program. Sequel to Kings and Empire. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not talking about a movie this week. No, we're not. We are talking about. We are not talking about a book. We are not talking about pornography. In fact, we are talking about a video game. Yeah. What? Oh, so, Stefan, why don't you tell us about what a video game is? Okay, so a video game is the um, it's the no, it's the pastime of a specific culture of humans uh, who have frequently been oppressed over time, and they're mostly known as gamers. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they get together in little, sometimes little groups or communes. Uh, Aren't and, they called colonies? Yeah, well, I mean, they're called hot couches. We're talking about Night in the Woods. Uh, did some research. Stefan, thank you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Night in the Woods, since you're the one who likes this game so fucking much? I do like this game a lot. Thanks for mentioning it. Eat shit, fucker. It's gonna get mentioned probably a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mostly in as a way of putting me down. Yeah, uh, <laughs> disparaging. <laughs> How disparaging? Uh, it's a 2017 game developed by Infinite Fall, uh, which is a studio founded by game designer Alec Coloca and Scott Benson, who is mostly known for animation. I believe it was actually published by um, Finji, though. And it takes place in a fictional small town in what is very heavily implied to be the Rust Belt in the United States uh, called Possum Springs. And it stars... And all the characters are like zoomorphic humans? Animals? It's a little unclear about whether... Because there's like... It's been... It's suggested that they're just humans that are being perceived as animals because there's also like actual animals wandering around there's squirrels <laughs> there's squirrels and yeah. cats and a very big raccoon yeah yeah there are cats that's true yeah so it could be that but anyway you see the main characters as like kind of these richard scary animal people uh in this very cartoony animation <laughs> style it centers on um one character may borowski who is a college dropout returning to possum springs and her misadventures with her friends as she gets back it's more it's like a coming of age story that slowly becomes takes a more supernatural bent i guess you could call it more of a cosmic horror bent and uh yeah that's what we're doing today i'm very excited he is can i just say something real quick yeah before we continue on this uh fine venture into a night in the woods Mm -hmm. nice dude very good (laughs) (laughs) um Every time they mention Possum Springs, I always kept thinking about Possum Lodge, like the place that the Red Green Show takes place in. They're actually part of the same universe. In fact, Hell yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, you ever want to see Hank from the Red Green Show appear as a raccoon? There he is. Then play this fucking game. Yep. Yeah. You fucking assholes. Two two very um, separate uh, audiences that will never interact. Uh, oh, absolutely. With the exception of with Chris Ranta. Yeah. So. Um, this is, in fact, the uh, spiritual sequel to the Red Green movie, Duct Tape Forever. Yeah. That's, there's, like, a, a little note at the start of the game. Um, you have to watch Duct Tape Forever first in order to understand what's yeah. going on. <laughs> Duct Tape Forever, now with 100% more cosmic horror and fun. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and walking animals. Yeah. Um, yes. So the impetus for doing this episode, I think, was... Uh, getting uh, Tim on the show. Yeah, well, yeah, but also... Tim, you brought it up, mm. and uh, the only reason I played it was because I think I heard you mention it offhand at some point. So how, how did you originally play it? I was, like, in the mood for an indie story-based game, and, like, the reviews were rave about it, and then I started playing it, and it definitely ticked off a box, um, and then I, like, mentioned it to Stefan. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all it came and to. that's how this nightmare started. That's, yeah. That's, that's how this night in the woods started. And, again. Uh, hey! hey oh, hey He's oh. on the ball I today. I am so on the ball today, boys. You have no 
fucking idea. I guess like wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Keep telling me how I'm on the ball. You're on the you're, ball. You're on you're you're, you're, doing you're really on that ball. Yeah. Um oh, shit. You're a ball standard. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Run home. Again, yeah. yeah good job. Do you play baseball because you're on it? He sure is. Yeah. Ah, yeah, beauty. Yay. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess like uh, I, rang, I rang up Stefan and I was like, hey man, um, this game, like even though I was lukewarm about it, it's still in my head for whatever reason. And a big reason it's still in my head was because like Stefan played it and then like a couple months back when he got through it, he was like, I loved it. I loved it to death. And I was like, yeah. I just couldn't get into it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, why is this person, and I'm not just jerking you off here, yeah. whose opinion I respect on this type of things, why does he like this so much, whereas I had a lukewarm reaction. And I was thinking, like, this game is very specifically attuned to, like, your frame of mind at the time and, like, like a very specific audience. Mm-hmm. In the same way that, like, I think when we were talking, we talked about Scott Pilgrim and how Scott Pilgrim is perfect for you if you're, like, between the ages of... I mean, it's still a good movie, Yeah. but I watched it recently and it didn't hit me the same way. I watched it when I was 15. I think I went to it four times or something stupid like that. Um, <laughs> hey, you're theaters. the reason why the movie broke even. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Barely broke even. Yeah. I'm sorry. Me and the other, you know, umpteen year olds just, just hanging out on our long boards and, and stealing our parents' liquor and doing yeah. stupid juvenile shit like that. And so I was like, Stefan's a little younger than me. I'm 25 and you're... 22. 22. And I was like, maybe the reason is because it's like perfect for someone who's who's just reached their 20s and like someone who's a little older, they've just missed that mark. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess that's where we came to the idea. And now we're just going to talk about the game and yeah. talk about why a little bit. Can, yeah. I, can I just say something real quick as a fact check? Sure. Scott Pilgrim actually bombed at the box office. Really? <laughs> it, it, it cost $60 million to make and only made 47 back worldwide. And I remember reading reviews for it. And, and everyone mostly, loved it, yeah. No, no, well, like a lot of the reviews I read, like traditionally uh, older people, like in the Edmonton Journal and stuff like that, are we allowed, do we like, do you guys give out the location? I don't care. In the don't journal? Care. Yeah. In the journal. Uh, <laughs> we're actually from Chicago. I just read <laughs> small Canadian city newspapers. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Auckland. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to I, Michigan, guys. <laughs> we'll be celebrating America Day real soon. Now. Uh, I love dying the river green or whatever. Uh, um, so it was like 40-year-olds who were like, this movie, we don't get it. They, that's what they said. It, mm-hmm. it would be perfect if like you're, you're like that hyperactive age of video games and like an alternative rock and stuff like that. And that's sort of what Night of the Woods felt like to me at the time the way that they spoke i was like i remember speaking like this but i just passed that point of feeling about the world the same way that may borowski feels about the world Mm -hmm. yeah i think this game is very very niche and i would recommend it to a very niche group of people Mm -hmm. um including stefan slahio it's I, i i was shocked like when i played it again for this episode like it was like how much of like me i saw in it not necessarily because i'm not a one-to-one with any of the characters i would say but it's like holy shit, I talk exactly like that Mm -hmm. (laughs) at one point. I agree 100%. Like, for somebody growing up in the late teens of the 2010s, I get, yeah, okay, well, they're all teens, but the late 2010s, uh, like, maybe in their late teens or early 20s, early-ish 20s, like, I think it does hit that demographic really hard because I heard it described as millennial millennial humor, and I think that's a little vague and not helpful. Right. But it is more uh, it is more helpful in the sense that, like, yeah, it's this very specific like age group that I think would apply to that are going through these not even the exact same struggles as the characters, but at least partially similar ones. This game needed more drill jokes. <laughs> drill jokes? Yeah. Oh, you don't know what drill is? No. Uh, oh. <laughs> the best Twitter account, please. It's- Let's read some tweets real quick. Okay, yeah. See, sorry. this is me being an ancient 25 year old and you guys being two 22 year olds. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Please read some aloud. Uh, we they should invent a spittoon, but for urine. <laughs> is that what the kids are are into these days? <laughs> Uh, okay okay back (laughs) 
age You're zero. Over it. Yeah, yeah, please do. And any funding oh, that is not diverted into an anthropological study of drill is funding misused. <laughs> um, people growing up like now, and I've had this conversation with people my age in my research, by which I mean I talked to two people. Nice. Uh, younger people are starting to like kind of grow up with a sense of impending doom. What with climate change and the fact that nothing will ever get better obviously in night in the woods it's a i mean they might reference that exactly but it's more in the context of a cosmic horror but the feeling is very much the same so fucking. there's a lot of references to like inevitability and the fact that no this there is there's literally no hope for this town like it's going to decay and fade and everybody's gonna leave that feeling is something that i think is very is it hits home with a certain younger group of people Myself included. See, which is funny, and like May, like a lot of her dialogue kind of um, uh, reflects that. Um, and that's maybe why I was annoyed by her character. And the character that uh, I connected with the most is like, so, so May's a cat, and uh, like that's her zoological version of her or whatever. Yeah. Um, she's a cat. She's a cat, yeah. Her best, or her like estranged best friend is, uh, is named B, Beatrice. She's a crocodile. She's the one I connected with the most. She was my favorite. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's because, like, while the other ones, like, their approaches to the impending doom are, like, just kind of giving up in a way. Um, or, like, I guess with Greg, it's, like, lashing out. Greg is... is a May's, fox, I think? Yeah, he's Greg's a fox. A fox. Yeah. yeah. He, he kind of has this who gives a fuck attitude about everything. And yeah. Like, he'll just leave work just because. or He's very, he'll go, like... He'll go destroy shit just because. Like, he doesn't fucking care. He wears like a, uh, I believe they're called like a pickle hower or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll, 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 I'll accept that. It's the German <laughs> World War One spiked helmet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's got an anarchy symbol on the side. And like he just causes problems. Whereas like Beatrice, she accepts her responsibilities. Her, her mom died of cancer when she was in her last year of high school. And it stopped her from going to university. And so like she sees May's approach to life in university as like very flippant yeah. and disrespectful because she's taking care of her dad, even though she got accepted into like all the best schools. It's interesting to see how all each of the characters has a different approach, mm -hmm. but hers felt like the most pragmatic. Yeah, yeah. And hers felt like the most like reasonable. Like she's definitely the voice of reason in this game. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the most ethical, I would oh, say. Oh, by far, yeah. Because there's a scene uh, where they're in a mall, and May's like, "Let's steal shit." And she's like, "I don't really want to do this." And then they steal shit, and then B is like, "We're taking this back." Mm. Um, so they're they're like little scenes like that where she just proves herself to be like such a great character. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's asked me what I think of the game yet. What do you think of the game? What do you think of the game? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> he just very solemnly put a beer can um, on the good. microphone. It's <laughs> good. Um, Hot take. Yeah, <laughs> yeah who knew? Um, I don't like it as much as you, Stefan. Pussy. But I... Nice. There's a lot of them in this game. Again. That's what I was referencing. Yeah. Including you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm not going to deny this. This is all true. <laughs> wimpy, wimpy, wimpy boy. Yeah, stop saying facts. <laughs> stop spitting. Hi, I'm Ben Shapiro here with my facts yeah, and logic, logic about yeah. Stefan Zalejo and how he's a wimpy, wimpy, wimpy facts boy. Facts don't care about your uh, feelings. So. <laughs> I don't like it as much as you. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not as lukewarm on it as you. I'm kind of right in between you two, maybe leaning a little more towards Tim. I have my fair share of problems with the game, especially on a technical level, but we will get to that soon. But I think on a storytelling level, I think it's wonderful. I think the characters are all, for the most part, really strong. We'll talk about that later. So, yeah, like I, the reason Chris said I was lukewarm is because I didn't connect with a lot of the characters a lot of the time. They felt to me to be self-indulgent, but at the same time, like there were scenes that when there was a good scene, it was an amazing scene. So that's kind of where I am. Like we got, you know, it ebbs and flows, but when it flowed, like it flowed perfectly. And there's like a scene I wanted to talk about where there, and I think like this sets the tone for like a lot of the game and like coming from childhood and like believing in weird shit. Cause like, that's something they do really well. Mm -hmm. They talk up cause we've all believed in weird shit as mm -hmm. kids. It's another, it's a B scene. All of the stuff that I'm talking about that I enjoy is going to be B scenes. Uh, um, Why don't we just call this the B movie episode? Yeah. <laughs> really mislead people. <laughs> uh, um, Finally, we're going to talk about Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> this is, this is Our ten have fans have been waiting, waiting for this. For, yeah. <laughs> um, 
it's it's really they're they're in the mall and they're at the food court and B is talking about how when she was a kid she used to look up at the atrium and like in within the atrium there was like a light or something and because it was so high up and like mysterious she used to think God was looking down on her mm-hmm. while she ate and so she would actually speak to him while she was eating in the food court and I was like playing that part you're like that is so beautiful that is such a touching touching scene and like it goes so well with like how disappointing life has been for her because and everyone like they they had happy childhoods like most of us but now they're just kind of lost um so yeah moments like that are what just made the made the game phenomenal but like chris said then you get to like like quiet moments in between or drawn out segments uh with or like, just drawn out gameplay that's overtly su- yes. simplistic let's talk about the gameplay real quick because i have quirk i or, not quirks qualms <laughs> so i'll uh say like quirky qualms yes i won't say too much about it because like ultimately this i think this game works better as a narrative than like as quote-unquote video game yeah mm. and uh, we will talk about that and th- soon. that's just kind of how a lot especially a lot of indie games are these days i feel uh not that i'm an expert the gameplay is very thin most of the time it's it's which isn't always a downside. Sometimes it just means it's sim- it's simple and that's fine. But other times it can feel like it's just like to me it kind of felt like it's it was there for the sake of being there. Uh, yeah, like I I would say that the gameplay is like at best incredibly simplistic, at worst almost like borderlining on non-existent because you're basically just sitting there. There was a point where it was just me. My, I have the controller in one hand with my button on the X button, and I was just pressing and pressing and pressing as I was reading dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it makes me wonder whether or not this should have been a video game or if this should have been something else. Mm-hmm. But that's a topic for another time, or well, for later. At best, like, hey, this is really simple and okay, I guess. Maybe, you know, worst case scenario, really redundant. And at worst, it's just like, you just have one hand on the controller and you're just pressing X and reading dialogue and you're bored and you're just like, why the fuck is this a video game? And I think that is kind of not necessarily specific to Night in the Woods, but a lot of games of the era. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, The parts that really bored me were uh, the dream sequences, not on a visual level, because I think visually they're mostly spectacular. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, very nice. I just got a 4K TV today, so I'm just... The entire day I was going, I have to record this fucking episode. I wish I got to play this on the TV. Yeah. Mm. Like, it's just, it's spectacular. And I was going to say as well, I think this game works so well on console just because it is such a beautiful game overall. But the dream sequences especially are just like... Yeah. Because I played this on PS4. Mm. And I'm assuming you guys did this on Steam. Yeah. I did yeah. it on Steam. Or uh, GOG, I think I bought it. doesn't matter. Yeah. I... I, I, I tried to achieve the same effect by plugging it into an HDMI cable sometimes, but it wasn't quite the same. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the dream sequences look great, and they sound great, and they're cool conceptually. They're fucking impossible to play. <laughs> they're, because they're, not it, in... it, uh, they're not impossible, but they're really hard to move around in, because it, it's kind of hard to figure out where everything is unless you have the brightness turned way up. Uh, and they, they drag on for really long, especially when you don't have it memorized like where the musicians are. It's like the Battle of Winterfell. You're like, there's something cool going yeah. on here, but it's much too dark to see. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right, right, right. I forgot the game. Great, we can finally put a Game of Thrones tag in here this yeah. time. Another one, boys. Yes. <laughs> Fuck it. We're going to get as much of that Game of Thrones money as we can. Nobody is over it, so that's... <laughs> exactly. Everyone's still else. pissed about it. Yeah. Watch something else. <laughs> Revolutionary. Go, go fucking watch Twin Peaks, you fucking idiots. No, go watch The Office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's leaving People Netflix soon. That that's, that's actually... Actually, you know what the most underrated show on all time is what most underrated show of all time is friends i don't think i've heard of that one no No, neither of um it's It's, this it's this quirky sitcom yeah it's it's short for situational comedy oh okay wow and it's it's, comedy and it's about what's a situation uh well you see a situation (laughs) what's a (laughs) call situational comedy is like there's a situation and you make fun with it like oh yeah something wacky happens like Say that sounds stupid. Say yeah. your your wild neighbor who happened to scream the n word at the comedy club mm. multiple times slams open your door yeah. and then makes a grand entrance. Yeah, says it again. And then yeah. <laughs> this isn't referring to anything. This that is not referring to life. anything that happened Fly or anyone by the name of. Yeah. We're anyway, not. Anyway, that was my favorite chapter of Night in the Woods. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when he shows up and at the as a guest star to Garbo and Malloy, <laughs> <laughs> which is a thing in the game. The one of the best parts in the in the game are like the very last lines of the Garbo and Malloy set, set which was just something like, like a, a complete non sequitur. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, Next up, me and Malloy go to counseling. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Next up, uh, we join a suicide cult. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a murder cult or something. Yeah, something like that. No, those were really fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, Friends is the most underrated show of all time. Oh, anyway, right. back to Night in the Woods. <laughs> yes. Something people actually know about. As yeah, exactly. As Friends yeah. program. Yeah, Friends. Garbage. It's it's spelled the same way as Friends is spelled. And there's this great... <laughs> And there's this great <laughs> song that starts with "So no one told you life was gonna be this way," which really relates to B's character. Oh and, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You give me that Nancy Pelosi clap. <laughs> um. Anyway, where was I? Uh, we, I was just saying about how the, the dream sequence is kind of fall, the fall flat, not visually, just, but just, on a gameplay level, like on a, on on a, a gameplay level, level, I yeah, found them really yeah. repetitive. Yeah, I I, wish they gave you a more interesting challenge each time instead of find the musicians again. Yeah, yeah. It it really feels like they absolutely put narrative first and gameplay second, and it frustrates me because I wanted at least some kind of a challenge. And like, there are games, like if you look at like the Telltale games or something that Mm. are very narrative based, you still have really strong gameplay to go with those. The Batman uh, one, especially. I don't know. I know it's not the most popular one. Wolf Among Us is because of. the whole like neo noir thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a great looking game. Well, I was even gonna say like the Walking Dead ones too. Yeah, those. I, I just feel like because Batman's um like the most recent, they really oh, yeah. managed to make it like the sharpest. Yeah, not making any. I actually else, haven't so. played the Batman ones. Really good. Really I've good. heard they're great. But yeah, you're right. Like there are even until Dawn has some really strong gameplay. I don't like the game at all. Mm. But Heavy I, Rain. Yes, Heavy Rain, which I haven't played, but. Mm. You know, like, there's strong gameplay in those. And, I mean, obviously with... I will come back to Until Dawn as well, because I have things to say about Until Dawn. <laughs> it, it just really disappoints me that they didn't do much with the gameplay here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. High five. Moving on from gameplay, um, because Let's... you loved it so much, Stefan, like, why... What is it that made it so fucking likable to you? Have we, have you kind of already touched on that? Well, I can, I can touch a bit more on it. Uh, it. It's... Oh, yeah. I okay. will believe me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it taps into a lot of what I feel a lot of the time. Like obviously, I don't have the same struggles as the characters. I don't have whatever was going on with me. Uh, I don't work anywhere near as hard as B. Yeah, I'm not whatever Greg is. <laughs> <laughs> Greg isn't even a character. He's just there. Yeah, yeah. Gr- Greg is just like uh, yeah. That, that, they, they, we can talk about Greg. Yeah. We can okay. Talk about, um, <laughs> But. He's he's just yeah like Greg is, I guess that's something that that's like a credit to the game is that because like the other three main characters are so strong, mm-hmm. Angus B and May in comparison like whereas he would kind of serve more as more interesting with less interesting characters he's mm-hmm. more noticeable. Yeah. I think the biggest problem with that is when they do start giving him some kind of tension like with him and um what was the fox's name again greg do you mean greg or angus because angus is the bear greg is the fox oh no i okay so i definitely meant okay so i definitely meant angus yeah yeah <laughs> okay we're gonna have to start over again okay because <laughs> let's talk about how much i don't like angus as a character. oh okay oh, really okay i don't like angus at all there there's not because not because of anything about his character it's just that i think they do absolutely nothing with him and they do nothing mm-hmm. with greg either because greg did is... you play when they're doing the ghost hunting parts, did mm. you play his segment? Uh, no. That's one of That's, my favorite parts of the game. Is that when it's talking about, like, his skepticism? And yeah. That? Yes. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. Man. So, crazy. at the end of the second act, they're doing the ghost hunting segments where you can choose, choose to go either, go, make and choose to go with either B, Greg, or um, Angus. And uh, they'll go look for clues about the supposed ghost that's haunting Possum Springs. Clues. Uh, and you can pick two of them. You, you okay, can... so where did where did May and Angus go? Because I actually might have played it. May go up the uh, hill or B- something. Bia goes to the goes to the cemetery. Yep. Uh, Greg goes to the historical society. Yep. And uh, Angus goes to Possum Jump. I think I went with Angus then. Yeah, that's one. And of... that was probably one of the better moments with Angus. But I think the problem is is that like when there's tension between him and Greg, I just stop caring because it just feels like it came out of nowhere, and those those building blocks towards that tension just weren't there. It's a C plot, for sure. It's it's um, absolutely a C plot. And I, it almost just feels like it shouldn't have even. Been I think included. if you go um, just on Greg's route, which 
I don't want to do, but it's the so, worst route in the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the building blocks are a little more established because you can kind of see like the tension kind of mounting between him and Angus, where like Greg does try really hard. Oh, okay, because like that... too hard to yeah. keep Angus around because Angus is what grounds him. Oh, okay. Well, B says something really interesting about that. Yeah. She says uh, when when they move out of this shitty town, that's another thing. Everybody wants to get away from Possum Springs in it. Um, and when B's talking about that, she says, um, as soon as they leave the city, uh, because they're high school sweethearts, uh, Angus is going to realize he's too good for Greg. Mm. And like, it's, it's a dialogue like that where you're like, I've heard conversations like yes. this, you know, yeah. like in real life. And they're super uncomfortable because you have your friends and stuff like that. Like they're these painful truths. And that makes the sections of the game that are phenomenal, like actually phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, sorry Angus. Part. So the part of pause and jump is just this scene where um, May and Angus go to this kind of park, and with a hill called Pause and Jump, and uh, they obviously don't find evidence of a ghost because there's not actually a ghost, kind of. Uh, and so they just sit at the stop, uh, the hill, and look at stars and point out constellations. And after they do that, Angus uh, talks about his childhood and how he was abused as a kid. How he got locked in a cabinet oh. and they would make food fall on him. That is oh, to, like, throw food on okay. him and his mom throw shit at him. Yeah. Maybe I didn't play this then. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's so... I thought I played this yeah. and I didn't. Okay, then I'm an idiot. Cool. <laughs> so, and uh, he talk, uh, May talk... Because May, May's religious. Well, kind of. She's a lapsed... Christian. She's spiritual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and she mentions, like, that she, and she believes in the supernatural. Uh, well, she believes in ghosts anyway. Yeah. And Greg and Angus absolutely does not. He's a staunch atheist. And uh, she kind of presses him on it, and he says that, like, when I was in the cabinet and hiding from his parents, he would try to, like, develop psychic powers to talk to the people around him to communicate for help, and nobody ever came for him. But at least his belief in, or his skepticism kind of grounded him, whereas it would, whereas other people might have turned to harmful coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best scenes in the game, I think. Like, yeah. Because yeah. uh, he also has a really good line. Uh, it's, um... Where he kind of talks about kind of the nature of belief, I guess, in general, which kind of ties into the themes of the game. Where it's, uh, we're good at we're good at drawing lines in the space between stars. Like we're pattern finders, and we'll find patterns. Mm. And we like we really put our hearts and minds to it. And even if we don't mean to, so I believe in a universe that doesn't care and people who do. Uh, the stars can stay up there and not give a shit about us. But this whale is pretty cool. Hold yeah, because there's a whale yeah. constellation. Yeah, no, I got it. And so, I think. Um, Kind of this sense of like nihilism, but positive nihilism, I guess. Optimistic like, nihilism. Optimistic nihilism is what k kind of draws me to Night in the Woods or keeps me coming back anyway. Because it, I don't feel like it wallows too much in like its own self pity or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't feel woe is me to me all the time because there's always like something like kind of just something kind of pulling it out of that. Uh, Made it to me. May is a little like that, but it's more the people around her that like they find their own kind of ways to cope cope with it. Like there, there's that one line where, um, and I forget who says it, but uh, I think it might be Jackie who says it at the party that B, May and B go to. Oh, um, wait, it's one of the best. Well, the, all that the, was yeah, that was a all great the B moment. Stuff, yeah. yeah, all the B shit's great. Yeah. Like, oh god, the fucking pageant where she's like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Where she says, the world is ending, May. Of course there's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, the, the, the optimistic nihilism stuff is really cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know if you guys saw, like, the... T Sorry, I'll stop talking in a second, but... Uh, the tagline of this game when it was coming out was... I don't, know, I don't think they really use it anymore, but... Uh, at the end of everything, hold on to anything. Yeah. Uh, and I think that kind of sums up the theme of the game uh, really well. And also at the party, like there's a guy hanging out in the back that you can talk to. I, I miss I missed him every time. It's at this one where he says the wise kitten focuses not on what is lost but what is left behind. Mm. That gets restated every game, and then that guy says like nothing for the rest of the game. Mm. <laughs> but um, that general sentiment is what keeps me coming back to it. Yeah, because I think that's a feeling that I get a lot of the time, which is just complete despair, but like also hope in the people around me. Yeah. I think it's a fairly universal feeling, I, w I, w I would think, to some extent or another. Oh, for sure. It's yeah. I mean, like, that's... I kept linking this back to Scott Pilgrim and, like, how 
it, it hits an age like a gong, right? Mm-hmm. Like an age group. And like, really, these stories, thank God, don't have like super high stakes. Like nothing really changes except for for the circumstances of the characters. Themselves. Yeah. Oh, I think no. Like the characters certainly evolve throughout the game, and I think that's what you're there for is to watch the characters evolve. You tried to sell me on this game with like the Twin Peaks angle. I mean, only in the sense that it's mm. like weird shit happening in a small town. I don't okay. Think I ever said like, oh, it's Twin Peaks in a yeah. game, but with the kids. No, no, you didn't. No, yeah. no, you didn't say that. But you were just like, hey, it's got that Twin Peaksy vibe. Like, sort of and like I, that. Yeah, and I ahead. said, we'll fucking see about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you said to me, well, you better because we're going to do an episode on this, you fucking asshole. Buy the game. It's <laughs> a really so, nice way of segueing it in. So, <laughs> I, uh, have a choice. so I played it. And yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's as connected to Twin Peaks as like the whole beard shit, small town thing. But I... That's literally what I meant, but yeah. But... <laughs> yeah, but, when you, work. but you literally just said to me, Twin Peaksy vibe. Like, you, you know how to cater to my base. But it feels more like weird shit, small town slash a coming of age thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think that was what was more interesting. So, yeah, like, I think this game is, like, amazing as far as, like, character growth is concerned. Because, like... You had mentioned earlier, like, these aren't characters I would normally like in real yeah. life. I would probably find half these people to be obnoxious pricks. Well, yeah, th- there is, like, that sense of, um... See, I-, I was also playing this when I was in the middle of a uh, a relationship with a, a real jerk. Uh, <laughs> oh, you can use actual swears on the show. Now. I'm just going to use a real poo-poo head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the network doesn't care. <laughs> And she was very romanticized art and stuff like that. And being like, oh, we're artists, blah, blah, blah. So at the time I saw that, but like playing it again, you know, I was like, oh, okay. Like these people are just, that's how they are. It's not because like they think they're better than anyone or anything Mm -hmm. like that. Because like there's the millennial way of talking that you were talking about, like that's not the only characters. And that comes like, it's not just about growing up and like characters growing, like I guess moving into like the next section or whatever, a big part is generational clashes. Yep. Certain people uh, who just, you know, it's very obvious what their opinions are. Like they describe like the immigrants in quotes as the problem and stuff, willing to commit um, evil in order to uh, keep their town thriving. Bia refers to them as the cult of conservative dads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like, oh, oh, you're talking about like the cult at the end of the game? Yeah. 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 Um, Sorry, I skipped ahead a little bit. No, 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 that's <laughs> no, fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, I was going to say, because I texted you, Stefan, immediately as I got to that point, and I said to him, fuck Twin Peaks, this shit's turning into hot fuzz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, because as soon as he started talking about, like, for the benefit of the town, I just sent him the gif of, like, for greater the greater good. Because <laughs> that's all I was thinking about the whole time was, the greater good. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. greater good, the yeah. greater good. That's yeah. totally, and they're all hooded. And yeah, they're stuff. all hooded, yeah. and it just, I couldn't stop laughing the entire time. Like, not because it was bad or anything, but because... All I could think of was fucking hot fuzz. Yeah. And I feel, I apologize to the developers and the people who work their asses off on this actually really solid game. I don't know how seriously, like, they're supposed to be taken. They are they are kind of a joke. Like they, those guys, No, no, they're so. an absolute joke in the sense that they're evil and their motives are incredibly stupid. But they're working for but them. But they're yeah. working for them. Yeah. Although Bia does mention at one point, it's like, aren't if you actually, like, working class? Yeah. <laughs> aren't if you actually, like, feeling the hit of the recession? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're, yeah. like, the great-grandchildren of the miners who actually, yeah. like, had a good point. They, the union they, strikers. They're yeah. quite literally the Republican Party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's super allegorical in, like, my mind. Maybe I was mm-hmm. reading too much into this. but No, I, I think that's probably where they were going with it. Yeah. This uh, game wears, it's like, um, societal and political opinions on its sleeve, like very yeah, much. Like, yeah, it, do, it it doesn't like. I saw when I looked it up after the game because it was in, after I finished playing because it was in my head. I saw a lot of people trying to claim that like, oh, but it does a good job of like balancing out both sides. No, 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 no. no, no, no. It doesn't try to either, which I appreciate. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that it doesn't. I, it I, doesn't do that false <laughs> equivalency. No, thing. I, I'm yeah. glad that this game has a worldview and sticks to it. Like that's one yeah, of my like, favorite. Like B mentions various times she's part of a young socialist chatterbox. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. That's, <laughs> like one of my favorite things about this game is that it has an ideology and it fucking sticks to it no matter what. Yeah, this game doesn't back down. This game has a fucking backbone, mm-hmm. and for that I really love it. For yeah, what what I do like though is when May mentions at the end that like. Obviously, the conservative dads are, as I'm going to call them, are, That's fine. Uh, <laughs> are yeah. going to. Obviously, they were bad, but they had a po- but they had a point in the sense that 
a lot of the world that people know is being taken away. Yeah. And they're just kind of lashing out. Yeah. yeah. Um, even if they're lashing out in ways that are like reactionary and even allude to fascism a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oil country. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Sorry, this show I got, is I got got super low. By the way, this show is uh, this show is shot in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah. And explicitly not Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So I don't want to get you guys fucking. No, no, it's or fine. Anything, anyway, but... fuck Jason Kenny. <laughs> We can all agree on that. Jason Kenny, D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, you seriously. voted for D's nuts this election too. Anyway, we live in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> we actually flew into Alberta just to show our support for the oil sands. All of that was was super phenomenal um, as like a theme, but to me, like uh, you know, we've been kind of singing its praises for a while now. Back to the negative thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo! Yeah, you know, we have to, we're balancing it out. Yeah, it's Gotta not a false it. equivalency. <laughs> um, but the the ending itself and, like, the bad guys were, like, kind of funny, but they were weaker than the rest of the game. Yeah, it, like, I think, I think when it was revealed what they were, yes, I was laughing because I'm like, hey, hot fuzz, but at the same time, it was like, eh, eh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it just felt like a little bit of a letdown. Like, it was still, like, that's interesting, but it was still just kind of a letdown. I thought I, it was kind of like I, I kind of saw the main core of like what the black goat is and like the whole the center of everything like corroding the town around it. Yeah, I kind of saw that, had gleaned that, and then the what was happening around it just wasn't very interesting. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. exactly it. Like yeah. the dialogue of the bad guys and like the back and forth between them and the yeah. band, all because because all the member or all the main characters, all four of them are part of a band. Oh yeah, the guitar hero uh, segments are so not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's another negative point. Yeah, yeah. We'll bring that up again. Tacked on gameplay, but like, yeah, tacked but, on gameplay. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, yeah, it just felt because it, it the game had built up like this creepy atmosphere for a while. At one point, May finds a human arm. Um, that reminded me so much of Blue Velvet. You have no idea. <laughs> um, I've, I've never, I've never seen. Oh, that. there's a. Like, the main catalyst to what kicks off everything in Blue Velvet is Kyle MacLachlan's character finding a severed ear in the grass. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, that's basically what kind of kicks off everything in Night in the Woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the arm and, like, May starting to get paranoid and then, like, seeing a ghost, mm-hmm. so to speak, and stuff like that. All of that really ramped up. And then there's another scene where they're in a museum or something and, and they're escaping from one of these yeah. cultists. Yeah. Yeah. And it wrapped up to like nothing the ending yeah. was sort of a non-ending yeah it was more i, think I actually more, really like the ending i like the ending in the sense that it wraps up may and the other stories well enough it's just the whole antagonizing force like didn't hit me as well as it should have yeah. because yeah well because yeah. we we only got to know them for what like 20 minutes yeah. of the game there was hints like all of the tension before we meet them is really cool but yeah mm-hmm. like we don't actually get the true force of them when we finally get to meet them finally. Yes. Because we only get to know them finally for like 20 minutes of the game and then they just die. And it seems, sorry, Stefan. No, 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 no. It's a little anticlimactic. Yeah. That's, and that's like a huge running thread for like things that are good, you know, like properties that are good. I'm just going to like list off a bunch right now where they shit the bed at the ending. (laughs) Okay. Game of Thrones. (laughs) <laughs> dexter dexter <laughs> fucking dexter shits the bad arguably Mad Men, um the end of bill willingham's fable comic books spider-man 3 uh return of the jedi like um, sorry the, the ape galleon uh the show oh okay it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, netflix yeah. definitely shit the bed on the subs and, yeah, yeah, well, um, okay well that'll 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 have to wait <laughs> there, there's it just seems like uh, on a side note, like all these beloved properties, endings are hard, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, I mean, the, the especially I when you're of... really building shit up, right? Yeah. Yeah. The and one you... I can think of is oh, like lost. The, the yeah. prime is sorry, Chris, just That's Breaking okay. Bad uh, ended oh, yeah. it well, in my opinion. But mm-hmm. Breaking, well, I, I I would argue Twin Peaks ended it really well. Okay. But, so there's two. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say if you're just ending at season two, it doesn't end it very well. But oh, other shitty endings, Seinfeld. 
Yeah. Yeah, the ending of Seinfeld fucking blows. Yeah, also, like, they've never been that mean-spirited. Like, especially I never got Kramer. that impression from them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, they, 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 Elaine and and George definitely, like... Hi, welcome to Seinfeld episode. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to Seinfeld decay. Well, it just pissed me off that Kramer was laughing at that fat guy, because I was like, Kramer's never been that mean. No. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It's a different episode. Um, <laughs> Curb Your Enthusiasm's still good, guys. Okay, okay. I think the, always have that. the only, like, antagonistic uh, interaction in this game that, I, like, I actually liked was when May meets what she thinks is God. It's a big cat. Oh, yeah. I, I really like that interaction. Kind of hints and then immediately drops these things of, like, eldritch horrors beyond people's comprehension. And then it kind of drops it back, and I kind of like that because that's a staple of the that, genre. That's one of my favorite moments of the game, actually. Yeah. And it hints at the, at the theme of a monstrous existence that mm-hmm. people need to overcome. I really like that scene. That's the only, like, antagonistic interaction that, like, actually hit home for me, though, mm. um, I find. So, Stefan, since we're still talking about negatives, why don't you tell us a little bit about Greg? Uh, okay. I'm all Greg. I think yeah. I liked Greg more than either of you two. Maybe it's because I've seen his entire route, so I kind of know where he's coming from and, like, what his flaws are, mm. and that he's very, um... De- he, he tr- it looks like he's trying hard, and I agree with that, but it's because he's very desperate, and, and trying to hold on to Angus, who's like the one thing that gives yeah. him hope. Hope, yeah. essentially. But I also think uh, the way this game works is that you can, every day you can choose to ha- hang out with either B or Greg. Whoever you pick more will have ramifications for the end of the game for who you have uh, like a deep emotional interaction with. Well, yeah, during the epilogue. Yeah, and um, G- B's is really fulfilling. Greg's completely falls flat for me. Because, so to, to give what I think is the best example of this, um, so the main character, May, has some sort of dissociative disorder where she'll just start seeing shapes instead of people. That led to an incident in junior... Spoilers for the game, by the way. <laughs> we already talked about the end. Yeah, so <laughs> to get fucked. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. There was a moment in high school when she just started dissociating and, real- and started not being able to distinguish what's real and whatnot. And she beat a kid, severely beat a kid with a baseball bat. When she describes what that felt like to B, it's like kind of this heart-rending scene and B's really supportive and she, or she kind of goes along with what May's saying at least. Or when May tells that to Greg, uh, he just makes jokes. It really undercuts it, I think. It's the main and, problem with the character. Yeah, yeah, Greg is kind of like the, the com- comic relief among a group of mostly funny characters. Uh, and at it least can be quick. a bit much at times. Yeah. Like, and I think it really comes across that way in the epilogue. Yeah, like, no, because I ended it with Greg and I felt the exact same way where it's just like, this feels so underwhelming a little bit. But I at least like the idea of it ending with May hashing it out with a friend. Yeah. Like, I thought that was really beautiful. I think it's more, like, thematically fulfilling with B. Anyway, mm-hmm. I, I feel, no, no, it probably is. Like, that's what I was thinking was like, fuck, I re- really wish I had B. Because that probably would have been more... That would have been even better. But well, I think... two starkly different approaches to reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, May's parents are in trouble financially. Her dad has to work at some shitty, low-paying job. And mm-hmm. both of her dad and her mom mentioned to her, like, could you find a job? And she's just, like, completely swipes it. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is such a selfish thing to me. It's yeah. Like, but I'm, also, she's, like, completely unsure that she would even be able to hold down a job. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Um, going back to the whole, you know, choosing your adventure and how it, you know, impacts later on in the game, I think this game does an amazing job at not blowing itself on that concept. Like, it, the ramifications all add up very subtly in this game. Mm-hmm. Unlike another game that I've talked about in this episode called Until Dawn. Nice. I fucking hate Until Dawn. You love Dawn. it. I fucking hate that. <laughs> you I love fu- it. <laughs> like, there's literally a scene at the beginning of Until Dawn where they're like, you know, all the choices you make are going to add up. What you choose will determine how the rest of the game goes. And it was just like, man, I really love how this game's a choose your own arrival. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was fucking blowing itself on this concept. This just puked all over the table. No, no, I was actually know. sucking a dick. Oh, really uh, okay. Yeah, um, it's really nice. <laughs> I, I'm glad that this game, cause even like, you know, like fucking, uh, what came out last year? Detroit Become Human. Mm. The David oh, Cage oh, game. Fuck that game. Which is an absolute nightmare. Is it? 
Have you played it? No. Oh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost comical in how up its own ass it is. Yeah. That's David Cage. Yeah, that is yeah. David Cage. And that's why I think Heavy Rain, uh, I know a lot of people had a lot of problems with it. And the voice acting is super bizarre because it's all mm. Europeans and Parisian voice actors trying to be um, Americans. Yeah. So they'll be like, where are you, Ethan? You know, like, <laughs> it's, it's the weirdest thing in the world. Yeah, no, but Detroit Become Human, and I've only played a little bit of it, but it's, I stopped because it's like, this game is so fucking so far up its own ass. Yeah. And it's yeah. so pretentious, and it's such empty bullshit. And it's the same thing kind of with Until Dawn, but the problem with Until Dawn is that it's a traditional slasher in its story. You know, it's it's kind of fun, but, you know, when you're so far up your own ass about the choose-your-own-adventure aspect of it, which is what I call the genre of games, by the way. Mm. Um, Bandersnatch, am I right, fellas? <laughs> that's Black Mirror, right? Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. that movie fucking sucked. Okay. But that's an episode for another time, maybe. I doubt it. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. You know, um, I'm, I'm glad that this game was subtle about it. I'm glad that it didn't keep reminding me of it. It felt like Undertale in that sense, where Undertale's very subtle about that as well. So that when... You know, you do get to the end of the game. It's like, oh, so I could have done this and this could have ended differently. And then it makes you want to play it more. Whereas with Until Dawn or even Detroit Become Human, where it's like, either I don't give a fuck to play this again or I'm going to turn it off because I don't care anymore. It did it better than a lot of games. Like Heavy Rain did a really good job at its ending. I keep, this isn't like because I'm a secret David Cage fan. And it's like, Are you a secret David Cage fan? Did for you Heavy like, Rain. Did you, like, <laughs> did you like Beyond Two Souls? For one game. Yeah. Um, no, I never played it. It, it did it a lot better than than another than a lot of games uh, in that genre do. Like the Walking Dead games, while they're good, like not a lot gets impacted. No, not a lot times. gets impacted. But I mean, like it still is fun to kind of have that option. The Walking Dead games, yeah, and like any of the Telltale games, really. But well, their choices are very small. But oh yeah, they're very um, minor and inconsequential and almost lead to nothing. But they, but they like, still, like, hit you as you're making them. Yeah, but in games like this, or Undertale, or, I guess, to call out the shitty ones, Detroit Become Human and Until Dawn. Sorry, Until Dawn? Yes. Have you mentioned that? Until Dawn. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. now it's ringing a bell. <laughs> you know, that game with the guy who played Freddie Mercury in a movie. Just, like, one thing I wanted to um, kind of, like, revisit, just, just in case we really didn't... Um, you know, hammer the point home is just how good this game is for like people in not all, not every person, obviously, mm -hmm. but a certain group of people in their early twenties. Like mm -hmm. it's pro like how would you describe it as hitting you? Uh, it well. Did you cry manly tears? Uh, I did not cry manly tears. Okay, so it sucks. Oh, so this isn't <laughs> awful shit. Yeah, garbage. This isn't Titanic. Yeah, there was some going in the trash, <laughs> uh, but it it did emotionally resonate with me a lot. Um, I, I I think it will it will for most of I guess we could call it the borderline millennial Gen Z demographic if you mm -hmm. really want to. Um, and I think it mostly is because just kind of a combination of factors like we're becoming more conscientious of mental health. Uh, we're Growing up with the knowledge that, oh, there's a very real possibility that the world will just be irreparably fucked. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and some things that were taken for granted 50 years ago, we're just never going to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people, and uh, especially for somebody who lives in a smaller town like Possum Springs, which none of us do. The, a lot of small towns, especially in the Rust Belt, are becoming like economically just ruined because of decades of austerity and... Uh, complete dependence on nat on the natural resources that are going away, like that way of life is going to go away forever. Yeah, and I think for people growing up in that era, it's the per it's kind of thematically the perfect game. I was gonna say like yeah, you obviously touched on like the thematics mm -hmm. of that and like the impact of living in a small town and stuff like that. But I also think character wise. For people who live in a small town, they're really going to relate to a lot of these characters or really go, hey, I knew that guy once. Because that's kind of where I was. Because I lived in a really small town as a kid. And so I was kind of sitting there going, hey, I knew that kid when I was growing up. Or I knew somebody like that. I think for those people, it's really going to hit with them as well. Like, not only thematically, but also with the characters being the way that they are. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, like I said, like, if I met these people in real life, I don't think I'd like them that much as people. But as characters, they're really interesting to me because, one... 
you know, they're really well written, but two also that, you know, I really resonated with it with them because I knew a lot of those people growing up in a small town like that. Yeah. I also think um kind of the feeling of like we mentioned, optimistic nihilism it conveys. It's also kind of a part of this post millennial mindset. Uh, I said that I said that with air quotes and rolling my eyes. Yeah, he went, <laughs> he went he full exorcist there. Uh, yeah. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, yeah, we're 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 at the end of it, folks. We're we're in the end game, but uh, you know, at least you got the people around you, and it's just hold on to them while, while you got them. I think that resonates with a lot of people, and mm. to an extent, that's kind of fatalistic and kind of taking it for granted that we are gonna die in nuclear fire see that's which uh, i pray for every day but <laughs> <laughs> and i think like that comes down to like the very start of the argument or not argument but like the the disagreement Discussion. of opinions yeah mm-hmm. between because i i don't have that fatalistic grasp like mm-hmm. you know like uh, i'm a very optimistic person so you know like and optimistic nihilism is great but there's still this stupid naive hope and not obviously with me, but with like a lot of people that there's still some escape from this, even if there's, even if that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. No, I definitely see that. I'm not saying that like, I, I think that it's to ever granted that the world is going to end, but it's tapping into that mindset. I think is something that I think this, especially this new generation does a lot. Just look at a fucking meme, any meme page on Facebook. Yeah. No, it's uh, especially catering to that mindset. So let's wrap this up. Stefan, Tim, actually, we'll start with Stefan. Would you recommend Night in the Woods? I would. I would. I would recommend Night in the Woods. Uh, so thumbs up for you. Yeah, thumbs up for me. Um, uh, I think uh, if you're looking for a very technically advanced game in terms of gameplay, uh, this game is not that. <laughs> it's it's way more of a narrative. It's practically a visual novel at points. Yeah, basically. Uh, it, it's way more about the story than it is about the gameplay. And especially if you're younger and uh, younger, again, I think it is going to resonate at least in part with you. And it's a pretty short game, depending on how much of like the side quests and stories you do. Yeah. Side quests is a strange way to put it, but like the side stories. I did the bare minimum and I finished it in about six hours. Yeah, I did more than that and I did it in about 14. Actually, sorry, I did it. I did a little more than the bare minimum and I finished in six. Yeah, I think I was around 12. Yeah, like that. yeah. Um, Tim, thumbs up, thumbs down, middle of the road. Like we were saying, you have to be in a very specific mindset um, and maybe demographic to enjoy it. I think uh, I just missed the boat on that mindset and that demographic. Like, yeah. You know, there are so many really great things about it, but <sighs> <laughs> just a uh, just a big eh. For, for large sections of it. And yeah. for that reason, you know, like, if you're not, like, in that mood, you can skip it. You can't force yourself to like it. Yeah. It'll click if it'll click. It, if, yeah. if it does click, it helps if you are in that coming-of-age stage in your life. Absolutely. Like, I, yeah. I definitely think I was in that part when I played it. To yeah. an extent, I still am. But, yeah, it helps if you're kind of in the same age group and mindset as the main characters. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'm... So you're middle of the road, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep, I'm, I'm, I'm very thumbs up on this. Um, I think a lot of my character issues I had initially are probably going to be resolved if I play it again. Um, I, and I probably will, like, don't get me wrong. I probably will play this again because I did really like a lot of the themes. I liked a lot of the characters. The gameplay isn't very good, but if you're not in it for the gameplay, like I was more in it for the story, but if you're in it more for the gameplay and for a lot of the technical aspects, you're probably going to be more chitless by this. Mm. But I think if you're willing to take it for what it is, it's more often than not a wonderful game and the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Now, there was one other thing I wanted to do before we went. Um, are there, is there anything related to Night in the Woods that you would recommend to people? Oh, because um... I, have, I have a few things. If you have a few, I'm going to steal one of them, and I'm going to say Gravity Falls. Oh, yeah, because I was going to bring that up. Because I, I was talking to you about this before we started recording, where I said, this feels more like Gravity Falls than Twin Peaks, in terms of, like, weird shit, small town, but it's more of a coming-of-age thing than anything. Yeah, and it's a bit more but, mature. Yeah, but, uh, a bit more mature. Gravity Falls, touch. yeah, again, weird shit, small town, 
Uh, there is a coming of age element to it. Yeah. Uh, execution is very different. Though. Execution is very different, but it's also one of my favorite shows. Yeah. So. And Shout Factory recently put out the entire series on DVD and Blu-ray for you know reasonably cheap, I guess. Pirate it. <laughs> That too. It's Disney. They won't miss it. They won't miss it. No. <laughs> Good um, point. <laughs> but it's a uh, yeah. Don't support Shaw Factory, prick. Um, <laughs> no, but that's a wonderful show as well. I'm going to recommend both a show, actually a show, a movie, and a game. Um, I mentioned Blue Velvet earlier, and I as the catalyst for like all the shit going down was the severed arm in Night in the Woods, but in Blue Velvet's the severed ear. Um, I'm going to recommend one two. <laughs> like, like Blue Velvet again is like weird. Like Blue Velvet's more weird shit in suburbia, but if you like that like weird shit small town aspect, that's perfect. I'm also obviously, I'm also I'm obviously going to recommend Twin Peaks because that's like the granddaddy of weird shit small town, <laughs> and it's absolutely wonderful and it's perfect. And there's nothing well, there's there's things wrong with it, but I don't care. Warts and all, it's beautiful. Um. And for games, I, I just started playing it, so I'm not going to, like, wholeheartedly recommend it, but I started playing this game called Trooperbrook recently. It's a weird shit small town point-and-click game that was influenced by Twin Peaks and the X-Files, according to their website. Mm-hmm. And the influences are definitely showing so far. And I think it's fun. I'm having a good time. So if you want more weird shit small town games, I'd say give it a go. I'm having an okay time with it. Yeah. Okay, if you're a fan of the cosmic horror element of people trying to come to terms with an indifferent universe, uh, uh, just it not it doesn't really have that much to do with the Night in the Woods, but from that genre, there's uh, Annihilation and mm-hmm. the books that it's based on, which are the Southern Reach trilogy, which are very much kind of also about the cycle of destruction and rebirth, are somewhat touched upon in Night in the Woods, although in very different ways. I'll add. Uh, if you just like cosmic horror in general, you might want to check out uh, H.P. Lovecraft. Although he's an old his, racist, he's an, he's old, an old racist, racist. Uh, and it's very like it's very clear when he. Uh, there's a joke I heard where um, uh, he actually did originally write just like the monsters as straight up like racist uh, like caricatures as like Italians, yeah. and then like his editor just changed it to fish people. <laughs> like very racist, but like the feeling of dread is very well conveyed, um, even if it was just because he was scared of German people. And black people. And black people. Spanish people. people. And Spanish. Uh, anybody people. anybody who wasn't a sickly Anglo-Saxon shitlord. Yes. yes. Uh, do, do yourself a favor, people who are listening to this, and search oh. him up on Google Images. Because it looks like he has a toilet wand shoved up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> that includes you, Stefan's mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> um, I have, do you have an actual recommendation? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> besides looking up HP Lovecraft. Besides recommend. looking. <laughs> that'll keep you entertained for hours. Uh, I actually do reference uh, HP Lovecraft and Night in the Woods, but anyway. Go perfect. Yeah, uh, they do, Z- actually. Zelda Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. Um, because, That's a good one. Yeah, it, 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 it's not a, like with what you were saying, like there's not like an overt similarity, but um, it's got a lot of like really similar feeling to it of like lost innocence and like a lot of the characters are melancholy or, and they are melancholic, whatever it is. And they're dealing with like death and grief. And it's also from the point of view of an eight-year-old. So, like, from a younger point of view, mixing that with, like, death and grief is so, like, innocent. And it, like, produces such an interesting flavor that I think hits, like, the same notes as uh, Night in the Woods. All right. All right. And I think that's it for us this week. Uh, I'm good if y'all are. I think I'm good. You're good? Never. <laughs> fucking asshole Sequel to K. we're never content <laughs> <laughs> much like the characters in night in the woods hell yeah fuck yeah bro um all right so thank you so much for listening as always stefan's mom and the other nine subscribers we have say hi, hi to stefan's nice mom to, nice to talk to you yeah. stefan's mom yeah um thanks <laughs> Tim for coming on. Thanks to Tim for coming on. <laughs> we might to be here. we might have him on again. Stefan yeah. and I have to have a long chat about that. I we'll drank. Let, we'll let him out of the cupboard. I drank <laughs> four <laughs> beers during this episode, guys. Yeah, you did well. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I well, did. You held, held up really well. Yeah. That's a lot of alcohol. Are you okay? True. Yeah, I'm fine. Give me another one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will have another one. Thank you for listening to our crappy, crappy, crappy show again. Please recommend us to people who you think might actually like this stupid show. Uh, don't Those forget poor fools. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Um, check out our Patreon if you're interested in giving us actual money. You know the things that actually matter. 
Because, you know, exposure doesn't matter to us. No. We just want fucking money. I don't give a shit if you like us. I can't buy money. groceries with exposure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't buy my subscription to Pornhub with fucking exposure. They just want Visa, MasterCard, or PayPal. Exactly. Think of Chris, you guys. Think of Chris. Think of my Pornhub subscription. <laughs> The national anthem swells in the back. Especially, <laughs> especially you, Stefan's mom. Think about my Pornhub subscription. We're cutting that out. Anyway. Aren't you glad, aren't you glad I didn't go to law school? <laughs> you made the right choice. Yeah, you made the absolute right choice. Anyway. Um, yeah, but check out our Patreon. Check out our Twitter. Check out our Facebook. You can follow Stefan, Brandon, and I on Twitter. Um, Tim, would you like to plug anything while you're here? I write articles and shit, so if you search my name, Tim Tim Rauf, R-A-U-F, you'll be able to find me. Um, and that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, and I do graphic design freelance if anybody needs some, some fancy stuff done. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sure Stefan's mom will give you a call. I really hope so. <laughs> She's a sweet woman. Um, She's a good person. <laughs> I've never met her. Thank you so much for uh, listening as always, and we'll see you again whenever the hell. All right, see ya. Bye. Bless.